how did you see Salem the Piper and Piper the Salem? Piper the Salem man coming to you from the island of Puerto Rico out here in the Caribbean. It's been raining today. It's a dead disappointment. But I try to look at the bright side of it. Today, a lot of disappointments. Not on, not on myself, but in the news and and people that I know do, doing disappointing things and you counsel people and you tell people things and they just don't get it. Why are you going to come to an elder or somebody that's older than you and you're crying oh this is happening to me that's happening to me they're complaining so you give them the solution to the problem. They hear you and they say, uh-huh, uh-huh. They forget, they don't do it. I've had to tell people, you know what? You want to come over and you want to be entertained. I'm not a court jester. I might be funny, I might be relaxed, but I'm not a court jester. And I'm just here for your entertainment. There's a lot of issues I find very serious. This is my Savinelli. I'm smoking. After hours, Cornell and Deal. So you see, got a fruity taste to it. Getting back to it. So, was a day disappointment. So many things are happening. I just heard from a friend who's flying back from Heathrow back to Israel, telling me the U.S. is fighting her. Fighting and U.S. soldiers got hurt. There's been bombing in Iran. That stuff never stops. Biden's gonna sign a deal with Iran, giving them I don't know how much money, and we know what they're gonna do with that money. You know, what is it for? The oil? Whatever it's for, we should never have to deal with terrorists. The people who say they're gonna do, they're gonna hurt us or hurt our friends. The worst part about it, soldiers over there, they got to get involved in a quagmire. You know, unless, you, unless you've been upon, you, you, you know, you're not going to know what I'm talking about. If you never serve, if you're, not, you're just not going to understand the sacrifices that soldiers make. They don't make a lot of money either, but they sacrifice a lot. The wives sacrifice, sometimes the children sacrifice not having their dad there. You never compensate it. Huh? So now we got money going to Iran, a war with the US, a proxy war with the terrorists. Everybody's want to beat up on, 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 on Israel, who's been allies for since its inception, its birth. Giving us good intel. And we're here with these liberal farts uh, about, about to go to the other side. I have Palestinian friends. My question is this what have the Palestinians ever done that was good? That's how I see it. 
You're forever going to start problems. They break their promises. It's like a kid. You tell a kid, you sit the kid, you explain to the kid, hey, don't do this and don't do that. And we'll, we'll work things out. They go on and do whatever. You got kids raising other kids now. Just remember one of those days, you know. Worldwide hasn't been good. You know, I worry. I worry. I do worry. I, I can't have to admit it. I worry about America. What direction are we going? What's going to happen in this next election? I worry. I'm the one to say, hey, you know, that's whatever it is, it is. We sacrifice too much. I've sacrificed too much. Other men have sacrificed. Women have sacrificed the country, the taxpayers, for us not to care. For us to just sit around. Yeah, I'm smoking my pipe, but I, I'm... I'm, I'm watching and I'm hearing what's going on. A lot of the foreign policy is just senseless. This war, Ukraine war is senseless. Now you got the Ukraine side bombing the crap out of a nuclear power plant in Crimea. They're going to take an offensive on Crimea. What's that going to do? Is there going to be a meltdown? Even by accident, they bombed... The, they, they bombed... It's crazy, man. Are you talking about... The, the winter's going to help Ukraine sustain. Now Europe is worried about... Is it going to have enough oil? For the winter. Of course you're going to have enough oil. When hasn't had, when hasn't it had enough oil? What's going to happen is the, the prices are going to go up. For oil, for gas. Ukraine was such a beautiful land. Mass produced wheat. It's, it's a total disaster for no, no reason. Just, just. Two people that can't see eye to eye. Egos, man. Pride, egos. And these are these are characters from the last century, man. Mussolini and uh, World War One, going to war. It's stupidness. First two wars were stupidness. Germany was this man in World War One, and they let Germany grow. World War Two. You got people naive. Then we went from World War Two. We got involved in the Korean War. Then after that, we got involved in the Vietnam War. This has been nothing but war every decade. Everything has been worse in my lifetime. There has not been a decade in my lifetime where there has not been a war somewhere. Oh, you're a fatalist. In a way, I am a fatalist. Don't you get it? Why you got to fight over stupidness? There's a thing called sharing, sharing food, sharing the resources, but greed and power and control. It's crazy. We don't need that right now. We got, we got things to handle, overpopulation. Which we talked about when I was in high school. There was a book that was called Population Bomb. 
the sustainability of life on this planet. And then we have irresponsible people having kids. Then we got more responsible people that women can't keep their legs closed. And they have kids out of wedlock. What's the effect of that over the since the sixties? I I got married right. I had a traditional wedding. Wife wore white. I wore suit, limousine, the whole works. We did it in front of people. The death do us part. September 4th would it be 40 years I married to the same woman. We've had our ups and downs. It has been perfect. When I was in the military, it wasn't perfect for her. I was... It was rough. I loved, I cared for her, but... You know... You, you, you're worrying about things, you're gonna go to war, you're a medic, there's a lot of... Manuals that you gotta read, a lot of... Out in the field and preparing and you, you don't know when you're gonna come back. And when you do, you, 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 you have to unleash and sometimes you, you take it out of the one you love the most. I mean, the attitude and sometimes you're not careful with what you say. And you, women, women are very sensitive. I had to learn over the years that if, I, if I'm, I'm meant to have a wife, I had to change, man. You know? A lot of guys won't admit it. That was a hot ass. You know, I was with the Marine Corps. What do you think I was supposed to be, wimp? I'm in the Navy, they're in the Marines. I had to go through every training they went through and some. It was real serious for me. Making sure these guys come back and Getting the speech, oh man, you know, this is my dog tag, take one of my dog tags, and if I don't come back, please make sure I come home. They wanted me to tell their wife if something happens to them. I even had a, a woman threaten me, says, my, my, my husband don't come back, I'm going to blame you. No, what do I got to do with, what do I got to do with, Causing a war. Is you gonna blame me if a husband dies out there? It's people. People are nuts. People have lost it. We lost their common sense. They lost common sense. Hollywood's lost common sense. The government's lost common sense. So it's not a good day. Now it's getting better. Smoking. Good to think. You go back, get my treatment done, watch a little TV. This is soothes me. You see, there's a difference. There's people that smoke as a hobby. You know, they look at this and oh it's great, you know, they want to be some. No, I smoke because I need to smoke. It's a stress reliever for me. You know? It's a stress reliever. It changes my mind, refocus my mind. Whatever I have thinking, I, I focus on, on this pipe and smoke it. Think about the tobacco. This gets me, this connects me to nature. I smoke the pipe all of a sudden. I, I want to think of nature. I want to see things. And I love the outdoors. Hiking, love hiking. With your pipe, nice backpack, walking stick. 
you know, a couple of miles just walking, seeing the pond, seeing the trees, the lakes, the deers, seeing nature, especially when it's not tampered with. Like you go to some, some parts of Yellowstone Park and, and, and Yosemite Park, you walk in there and it has not been touched. It's, it's like going back to the early 1900s, man. I still got my walking stick. I bought it. I bought it. Uh, Yosemite. Really nice. And I went there. I didn't have a lot of money there, but my friend helped me out. I have money for a week. A week in Yosemite. You know how great that was. See the sequoia trees, how tall and big. And you stand under them, you can feel the energy. I took my shoes off. The woman that I was with was like, what are you doing? I said, the vibrations, man. The energy. I stood there. She goes, oh, you must have been a druid. <laughs> you druid, you forget I got Native American in me. I love things like that. I like to watch animals. There's nothing like you sitting there and here comes a, a, a moose prancing. This happened at, at, at Adirondacks, upstate New York years ago. I just sat there all of a sudden. I must have been sitting there for about two hours and a moose comes prancing. What about about a hundred yards away, and it was just right by this lake, looking around, the most beautiful sight. I went to the Museum of Natural History many years ago. My mom used to always take me. I'm going to put this random thought. I, mean, I went to this section called the bird sections. I couldn't believe how, how many animals were extinct. Birds I had never seen extinct. It was so sad. I don't like going to zoos. I don't like watching animals in zoos, man. It was so sad. And I used to like to watch the, uh, certain programs on TV, like Mutual Overhawk Wild, Mutuals of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Loved it. You see, but those guys were conservationists. I think it was based out of in, uh, uh, Africa. Mutual of Omaha Wild Kingdom was one of my favorite programs. Me and Granny used to sit there and watch that. Also, the undersea world, Jacques Cousteau. He used to have his bike on board the Calypso. In one episode, Lake Titicaca, where he went underground. I think it's in Uruguay or Bolivia, and he dove, and there was treasure down there. He couldn't, he couldn't do anything about it because of the government. The whole city down there. I remember one time, uh, I saw the Challenger deep in real life. We were on board the ship. And it was in, uh, it was on board of another ship, Challenger Deep. With the sub that went down into the Marianas Trenches. It's an amazing ship. You know it was 3,000 below? Took pictures and everything. That's amazing. The ocean. I remember I was two weeks out in the ocean. The waters were rough. 
with the sea breeze watching the the birds just following the ship from America cross to the Indian Ocean and the Indian Ocean is the scary not the Indian Ocean the ocean of uh, Western Australia is some of the most treacherous water and you're out there and you go weeks without seeing land that's when you that's when you start getting scared a little bit when the typhoon hit I had to strap myself in and my birthing space was off the fan tail in the back the bouquet would get so cold man I used to wear gloves little bunks back then we had cassettes I played cassettes I would get up go on to the catwalk meet my brother when he, especially when he was on watch he had to go around the, the ship he he flashed the light on me and said hey come on I grabbed my balking riff I bent and we go to the catwalk since he was part of the fire crew you know they were allowed to smoke some places you could smoke and it would be like two o'clock in the morning and i look straight up and see the southern cross the southern constellations i don't know if you ever been to hades planetarium it's the most spectacular view and to think that men sailed the ocean, they understood the stars and the and you see the big dip, the small dip, and you can see all the twelve constellations, man. You're on the other side of the world. Weeks without seeing land. If you don't have a disposition, being on board a ship can get to you. Somebody else's personality, like, I need to see land. All of a sudden you see land. You've been rocking and rolling all of a sudden when you hit land, pay dirt, and you're walking on land, it's so different. The vibes, vibration, because I bought that, I bought that crap. You can sense the en energy underneath you from the ocean, the power, the energy, constantly banging away at the bulkheads. But you think those people sailed out a wooden ships, man? <laughs> What's this say? The Bible Bible say the man smoking up, feel a little better. Until next, my friend, smoke up. Enjoy.